Welcome to our SPC 2A wireless tutorial video. In this video we will instruct you on how to program all devices onto our SPC controller using the SPC keypad. We will go through such things as the SPC W120 which is our bi-directional transceiver and this plugs onto our SPC controller. We'll also show you how to enroll each of the devices. Our SPC bidirectional wireless system is made up of our wireless transceiver, the SPC W120. This is required for two-way wireless transmission to all our devices. It also requires the SPC to be upgraded to 3.9. You place the SPC W120 onto the SPC controller into modem slot 2. That's the slot on the right hand side as illustrated. I recommend that you power the PCB down completely prior to the installation of the SPC W120. So you place it into modem slot 2 as I said on the right hand side as shown in the illustration. You then connect your antenna SMA connector onto the PCB itself as shown and then you mount the antenna onto the metal cabinet onto the outside of the metal cabinet. Make sure that the antenna is tightly screwed onto the board so you get maximum reception from all the devices. The antenna itself has a built-in tamper and it shows you the tamper lead. You snip the plastic covering off the end about 5 mil, and then using the T1 or T2 auxiliary tamper on the main PCB you plug the white cable into one of these and tighten down. So now you have the antenna itself tamper proof so if anybody damages or cuts the antenna uh, you will get a tamper on the panel itself. To enable the SPC W120 using the SPC keypad, you go to the engineer menu. By entering the engineer code, you go into full engineer mode. And then using the down button, you go to two-way wireless. Select this option and then select the enable option. Your two-way wireless is now enabled and active. You can start to enroll the SPC next generation wireless devices onto the SPC system. The two-way wireless devices are enrolled in a similar manner to the current wireless range, accessing the wireless menu and selecting the enroll option. And then you trigger the enroll on the device. In the case of our next generation, you place the battery in the device to start the enrollment process. Here we have the WPIR, this is a 12 meter passive infrared detector, and we start the enrollment process by placing the battery into the device. First of all we select sensor on the keypad menu, add the sensor and then select the enroll option. The panel is now ready to accept a device. So we now place the battery into the WPIR. When we put the battery into it, it goes through a self-diagnosis phase. This phase lasts about 20 seconds. At the end of this phase, it sends a transmission to the panel and this is indicated by flashing green LED and then it goes steady when it's enrolled on the panel. We can select from here the zone type as you can see so we're going to select alarm and then you can select the zone number you require for this device in this case zone 15 and we select that. The device is now enrolled onto the system. 
We can also edit some of the options for the device itself. Next we'll go through the enrollment process for the WMAG. This is a, a wireless two-way contact and again like the PIR we start the enrollment process by placing the battery into the device. So first of all we go to the keypad. Again we start the enrollment process on the keypad by selecting enroll device. We take the cover off the, the mag and we place the two AAA batteries supplied with the device into the battery slot. As soon as the device is powered up, it starts to activate the enrollment process and you can see again, like the WPIR, it flashes to send the enrollment signal and then the panel enrolls the device. Next we have the wireless PIR curtain version. Similar to the other devices, we start the panel enrollment process by selecting enroll device. We then open the unit and we place the battery into the unit as before. These particular devices use the CR123A battery. The Curtin PIR also has self-diagnosis phase on power-up. And then as soon as the transmission is sent to the panel, it will enroll it. As you can see from the menu on the keypad, all settings on the device are changed using the menu, the keypad menu. There is no dip switches or any settings on the device itself. So all communication is two way and we can send all settings directly to all the devices. Next, we'll show you how to enroll the WMAG-I. This is a wireless magnetic contact with an external input. So again, we start the enrollment process on the keypad. We open the device and we place the battery into the WMAG-I. As soon as we put it in, it starts the enrollment process. It sends a signal to the panel and the panel enrolls it and you can see there it also shows what type of device it is on it so we now know that we have the correct device in this case the magnetic contact the next device in our wireless portfolio is the WRMT or the wireless remote unit this unit is used for arming and disarming and also part setting the system. We also have a, an SOS or a panic function using two buttons. Unlike our other wireless devices, this unit is enrolled through the user menu and not the wireless menu as before. So to enroll these devices, we first go to the user menu. As we're assigning this unit to the user themselves, we first have to either set up a user, or if we have a user already on the system, we can just edit that user themselves. In this case, we have a user. We'll select user one, and we edit, and we go down to RF fob. Select RF fob. 
and enable it. After enabling RF fob, the panel is now in the enrollment process. So to enroll the device itself, we press the bottom two buttons. Press and hold these buttons down for about three seconds. You will know that the device has enrolled when the LED turns from red to green. So that concludes our video on how to enroll our two-way wireless devices onto the SPC system. In summary, the SPC requires the SPCW120 two-way wireless transceiver to recognize all the new wireless devices. And the SPC also requires an upgrade to firmware 3.9 or above. If you have the production firmware 3.8.5, you will not have the two-way wireless options. So make sure that you upgrade to 3.9. 3.9 firmware can be found on our website, www.spcsupportinfo.com and just follow the links to the firmware. It's downloadable and it's a simple process to upgrade the panel.